organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, a weekend full of deals and more deals. Small Business Saturday, a success. We have more from local Iowa City businesses. And for all you rock climbers, we have an update on the CRWC Climbing Walk coming right up. And in sports, so much going on in Hawkeye Athletics over the break. We'll catch you up on all the action. That and much more is coming your way. Daily Island TV starts now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowa TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning in to your Sunday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Brad Maxwell. After several weeks of being closed down, the rec center's rock walls will be reopened again tomorrow. The Recreation and Wellness Center closed down the rock wall after UI student Spencer Beam fell off the wall on November 8th. Although university spokesman Tom Moore says the incident is still under investigation, the rec center will reopen the wall. It's unknown as to what the university's next step will be. Spencer Beam could not be reached for comments. However, he is still recovering from the injuries from the fall. And many shoppers in Iowa City didn't let the Thanksgiving feast keep them down. Local businesses ushered in hundreds of shoppers during Small Business Saturday, and quite a few saw an increase in sales. Textile saw a 30% increase in revenue from last year's sales. And for Yotopia, a fairly new business, participating in Small Business Saturday was a good call. Yeah, it was definitely a great thing that we did. It was the second year that we participated in Small Business Saturday, and we definitely saw um, a day of successful sales because of it. And local businesses do give back to the community through charity donations and sponsorships. And still to come on Daily Iowa TV, the state of Iowa is climbing up on the healthy scale. Stay with us for more on how the university plans to keep it moving up. And in sports, the Hawkeye football team dropped their sixth straight game. New perspective and reaction from the team on the way. But first, we have Stefan Duran in the weather studio for a quick update on tomorrow's weather. Stefan? Well, guys, it looks like the cold weather we saw the last couple of days will stay with us tomorrow. In the morning, we will start things off with a chilly 27 degrees and cloudy skies. In the afternoon, the temps will only increase slightly to 31 degrees, still below freezing temperatures. The sky will clear off in the evening, however, and temps will dip back down into the 20s. Stay tuned and see if the cold, cloudy weather will stay with us the rest of the week. Back to you guys. A 30-year-old ordinance could be coming to an end on Tuesday. Iowa City City Council members will meet to decide whether or not to allow dogs on the Ped Mall. A ban on man's best friend in the pedestrian mall has been in place since 1978. However, it hasn't been strongly enforced. Tuesday's vote will be the second time the council has voted, and supporters of the removal of the ban are confident that the vote will go in their favor. Living longer means living a bit healthier. In the effort to make Iowa the healthiest state in America, the University of Iowa put on a 2012 health care fair. Daily Island reporter Nick Safransky found out, however, it's no easy task. Doctors to students to curious onlookers, the 2012 UI Fall Health Fair saw nearly 3,000 visitors. Over 70 vendors, including the Arthritis Foundation, the Crisis Center, and Live Healthy Iowa, piled into the main deck of the University of Iowa Fieldhouse. And whether it's flu shots or screenings, the fair offers an outstanding platform for local vendors. Blood pressure is extremely important to multiple different disease states, so we just like to provide a screening for patients. Um, it can be students, adults, anybody, and that's why this is a great setting because we can target the university students and you know the faculty, and it's just a great opportunity to have multiple different, um, I guess, opportunities in one place for people. And while the fair targeted university staff and hospital employees, some students found their way over. Yeah, I was just walking to class and I just saw some people from my class here just moseying around and enjoying the uh, different booths that they have. With so many tables, many people find their experience to be educational, but for others, it's about the freebies. And while it's hard to measure the impact of any health fair, any information learned may come from the fair's resounding, 
visual cues. Nick Safransky, Daily Iowan TV. And if you missed out on this one, no worries. The University of Iowa Spring Healthcare Fair will start in February. And now let's take a look at what's happening outside of Iowa. One man's response to a natural gas leak resulted in an explosion. The explosion damaged nearby buildings in western Massachusetts and injured 18 people. Authorities say a pipe punctured by one worker ignited it all. And blazing fire engulfed a seven-story factory building just outside of Bangladesh, killing 112 people. Some workers took refuge on the roof of the building, but firefighters were unable to save those trapped inside. The cause of the fire is still unclear and under investigation. And Egyptian stocks tumbled Sunday in its first trading session since President Morsi issued new powers that clears him from, an, from any oversight. The country's shares lost its value close to an estimated $5 billion. The 9.59% drop in stocks is one of the biggest losses in the past year. Well, Lauren, it certainly was not the season Kirk Ferentz and his Iowa Hawkeyes envisioned to start the year. But on Friday, the black and gold season came to a close, dropping its season finale to Nebraska. Yeah, that's right, Brad. Not the season anyone hoped for. And with that, we'll toss it over to Ian Martin, who's standing by in the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio. Ian? Thanks, Lauren. And a little bit of a different week for Kirk Ferentz's Iowa Hawkeyes, playing on a Friday for the Heroes Trophy, a win over division-leading Nebraska and, well, pride. Unfortunately, different weekend, same story as the Hawks continued their free fall to the bottom of the Legends division, ending their 2012 season with six straight losses. For one final time, let's throw it over to Daily Iowa TV sports reporters Nick Rector and Josh Bolander for some fresh perspective on the game. Four and seven, Iowa welcomed 14th ranked Nebraska to Kinnick Stadium on Saturday. Cold and windy conditions in Iowa City for this one. First drive, Nebraska marching the ball downfield, looking like they're going to grab a touchdown, but that Iowa defense holding strong on the goal line, putting a stop to Taylor Martinez's drive and only allowing a field goal. Iowa's turn now. Vandenberg finds Fedorowicz for the completion. That big man has got some soft hands. Vandenberg finishing the drive with a one-yard rushing touchdown. Third quarter now, Nebraska head coach Bo Pelini showing some faith in his kicker. And why not? Brad Maher's good for the 52-yarder. Hawkeyes still up 7-6, trying to add to their lead, but Vandenberg's pass to Derby is too short, broken up by Stafford. Nebraska with the ball again. Rex Burkhead back in the mix for the Cornhuskers. He rushed for 15 touchdowns last year. Missed half of this season due to injury, though. He's back here, rushing for his fourth touchdown of the season and putting the Huskers up 13-7. Iowa would get one last drive to win the game, but Vandenberg's picked off by Whaley. Corn Huskers would hold on to this one. Nebraska 13, Iowa 7. You know, we had to run the ball a lot more. Um, actually, in the game plan, we were playing um, take some shots downfield. But obviously, we couldn't do that because of the wind. Sometimes we were going to, uh, against the wind, sometimes with the wind. So it definitely made a factor. It was a spirited performance by the Hawkeyes. Unfortunately for Kirk Ferentz and his team, Saturday's matchup ended up just like Iowa's previous six games, as a loss. Now let's send it to Josh Bolander for a more in-depth look at the game. Six straight losses, 19 seniors, one seemingly lost season. Coming off four consecutive bowl appearances and a 2011 season where then-junior quarterback James Vandenberg threw for 25 touchdown passes, Kirk Ferentz's squad finished its 2012 campaign at an unthinkable 4-8 clip in front of a split home crowd with patches of red standing out in the tens of thousands of Hawkeye fans clad in black and gold. Sure, the Kinnick faithful saw an inspired first half performance from James Vandenberg and company, but in the end, there will be no bowl game for this year's version of the black and gold and a season most Hawkeye fans are soon ready to forget. It started with a visit from Penn State, who silenced a raucous Iowa crowd to start the slide, and road trips to Northwestern and Indiana turned a hiccup into a full-on slide for the Hawks. A devastating loss to Purdue put the streak at four, and as many expected, the Hawkeyes would fall in their final two games, although the results were not any less painful, as fans saw their Hawks go from soldier to seller in just a few short months. Wrapping up post-game coverage for the final time in 2012, 
I'm Josh Bolander, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Football players weren't the only athletes breaking a sweat, though, during the break with a number of Hawkeye Olympic sports in action. Two individuals even received some national recognition. And we'll start there with University of Iowa seniors and field hawks Jessica Barnett and Kathleen Murdy McGraw, both receiving second team All-American honors, becoming the 82nd and 83rd Iowa field hockey players to be named All-American in the program's pretty rich history. This is the second time that Barnett has been honored by the National Field Hockey Coaches Association as an All-American. Only four programs nationally have had more players receive All-American honors than the University of Iowa. More positive news for the Hawkeye athletic community coming from the hardwood. The men's hoops team has continued their rise, winning three out of four games during break. The Hawks' three-game streak was snapped in the finals of the Cancun Challenge versus the Wichita State Shockers. Lisa Bluter's squad had a rougher week, however, dropping a game to Florida International at the buzzer on Friday before rebounding today against number 12, West Virginia, 79-70. to Finally, we move on to the Iowa women's volleyball team who fell in their season finale at Carver this past Saturday, three sets to none to, net, to Illinois. The loss ended a cruel stretch of play for the youthful Hawkeye squad who ended their 2012 campaign with 13 straight losses, including a run of 37 dropped sets. For an extended look and fresh perspective on all Hawkeye action taking place over break, be sure to tune back in tomorrow for our Monday evening whip around where reporters will be out in the field for a more in-depth look at everything black and gold. Well, that's all for us here at Sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks for that, Ian. And standing by in our weather studio, Stefan Duran for our extended forecast. And Stefan, it seems to be getting chillier by the day. Can we hope for warmer conditions this week? Well, like I said earlier, tomorrow will be quite chilly, but the good news is things will warm up throughout the week. Tuesday and Wednesday, we can expect some sunny skies and temps around 40 degrees. Later in the week, the skies start to get cloudy again, but the highs on Thursday and Friday jump up into the lower 50s with lows into the mid 30s. Finally, on Saturday, the high temps will reach into the lower 60s, but unfortunately, the warmer temps bring a 60% chance of rain. That's all I have for weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Stefan, and only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into Monday's edition of the Daily Iowan. Read about the Hawks Nation, Mo Hawk Nation's most recent kid captain. And there's a new boutique in town. Read about how it's helping those who battle cancer. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.